So in this video, we're going to be looking at middle percentages. And the thing to realize here is that we've actually already done this. We have like the one standard deviation now is the middle 68, two is the middle 95, three almost all, and so forth. But what we're going to do now is go ahead and make it more accurate. When we look for a middle percentage, the thing to realize is that the z-table doesn't give us center percentages. It only gives us left end tail. Which means when we go to do this, we'll go ahead and we'll label our bell curve with the middle percents. For instance, we might be looking for the middle 50%, but when we go to our z-table, we won't use that percentage. Instead, what we'll do is we'll always look at the left end tail instead. The way to do this is to realize that whatever percentage I have in the center, I have 100% minus that to get the end tail. So, for instance, in this case, I have 100% overall, which means 100% minus 50%, gives me 50% to be spread between my two end tails. The other thing to realize is that this end tail and this end tail are exactly the same, and that's because this is the normal curve, which is symmetric. So if I have 50% overall, that means my red end tail is half of that, 50% divided by two, or 25%. So that is, my end tail over here is 25%. This process can be used any time we're looking for a middle percentage. That is, I take the center percent, 100 minus that, and divide it by 2 to get just the left end tail. Now that we figured out how to find the lower end, let's go ahead and do an example here. Now for this example, remember the ACT score is about normally distributed, average is 20.8, standard deviation of 4.8, and what we want to know is the middle 50% of ACT scores are between what two numbers? Now because I'm given a percentage and I want to find a z-score, the first step for me to do would be to draw it. I've luckily already done this up on top. So I labeled the middle 50%, split it off, found the lower end tail. This means when I go to look at my z-table, I'm going to look for the lower 25% or 0 0.2500. So going to the z-table then, we go ahead and on the z-table in the center, I'm looking for the closest number to 0 0.2500 I can find. 0 0.2500 won't be there exactly, but I choose whichever one's closest. I then trace that value up and over. And when you do this for this example, you're actually going to get a z-score of negative 0.67. This means when I go to do step 3 then, I go ahead and I say x equals x bar plus z times s, which will give me... 20.8 plus negative 0.67 times 4.8 and rounding this to two decimal places then I get 17.58. Now there's a little bit of a problem with this answer and that is I want the middle 50% scores and what I just found is that the lower end is 17.58. Well, I want the numbers in between, and so what I have to realize here is that 17.58 comes with a z-score of negative 0.67. That is, 17.58 is 0.67 standard deviations below the center. Now, if I want the middle 50%, then I need to realize that I also need to go up to the top part. The nice thing is this is symmetric, so this would have a z-score of positive 0.67. So, to find the upper end then, all I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the process, x equals x bar plus z times s, which will be 20.8 plus positive 0.67 times 4.8, or 24.02. So, in order to get my answer, what I did is, first of all, I drew. I labeled the middle 50% and used that to find the lower percent. I then went to my z table and found the lower percent or the number closest to it. So what was closest to 0 0.2500. I traced that up and over and got a z score of negative 0.67. Once I found that, I went over to step 3 and plugged it in for z. Knowing I wanted the middle 50% though, that only gave me the lower end. To find the upper end, I said, well, it's symmetric, so if this z-score is negative 0.67, the other z-score must be positive 0.67. I repeated the formula here, and what we have found is, according to our values, the middle 50% of people score between a 17.58 
and a 24.02.